Corey James is a prevention program manager with the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities. In this capacity, he serves as the DYTUR for Oakland County and is responsible for overseeing youth access reduction and related CINAR prevention initiatives. Additionally, Corey supervises the youth program coordinator and the underage drinking project coordinator positions with the Alliance and is the lead for the Alliance's urban coalition, urban Alliance's urban coalition initiative. Prior to joining the Alliance, Corey worked as a pro program coordinator for the Tri-Community Coalition. In this role, he oversaw the youth programs and worked directly with their student-led club, student clubs. Corey also worked as a multi-tiered support system social worker in a Genesee County High School. Corey is a limited licensed social worker in the state of Michigan. He obtained a Master of Social Work from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor, and a Bachelor of Social Work from Stephen F. Austin State University. Uh, not someplace in Texas. Nacogdoches. Thank you. <laughs> in his spare time, he enjoys reading and bicycling. Mary Ann Berger is a prevention program director for the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities. In this capacity, she provides oversight and technical assistance to the Alliance's 21 Prevention Coalition Network, as well as overseeing all prevention programming staff, programs, campaigns, and initiatives for the Alliance. Additionally, Mary Ann serves as a lead grant writer for the Alliance and has been instrumental in securing essential funding for the organization. Mary Ann served as a program director for the Holly Area Community Coalition before coming to the Alliance and brings over 20 years of experience to her position. In her spare time, Mary Ann enjoys pottery, yoga, and spending time outdoors. Well, thank you again so much for helping us out and uh, I'll turn it to you, Mary Ann. Okay. Um... Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I can't see you, so this is kind of weird format, but I'm gonna do my best here. Um, Corey, you wanna introduce yourself and then who's lurking behind your back there before we get started? Absolutely, and again, Mike, thank you for this opportunity. Again, my name is Corey James and I'm the Prevention Program Manager here at the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities. And I have with me my partner in crime, this is Positive Norm that you all will learn a little bit more about a little later. Okay, thanks, Corey. All right, so um, just to get started, I'm gonna start with a little background about the Alliance. We're here to talk to you today about implementing a positive community norms campaign in uh, partnership with uh, higher education. Uh, we particularly are working with Open University. So um, with that, I will get started. So just a little history of who we are. We're the Alliance of Coalitions for Healthy Communities. We were established as our 501c3 nonprofit in 2003. Our mission is through substance abuse prevention, uh, mental and physical wellness and recovery support programs. The Alliance connects, strengthens and mobilizes strategic partners to promote healthier communities. Um, this, this mission has gone through several iterations over the years, and we went through an extensive strategic planning process a couple years ago and up, updated our mission to be more in line with all the services that we're uh, providing for Oakland County residents. Our core values are collaboration, prevention, and results. Um, and you'll notice that means CPR, so we thought that was pretty clever when we came up with that one. So. Um, so here's Oakland County. This just gives you a picture of our service area. We service all of Oakland County as a, we're the largest prevention organization in Oakland County. Um, these stars show everywhere where we have a prevention coalition. Uh, so all of the communities, nearly all of the school districts in Oakland County are serviced by a local community prevention coalition. These circles um, represent the areas that we uh, cover with our Shatter the Stigma Family um, and Recovery Support Groups. Uh, since COVID, we have actually moved our support groups to an, a virtual platform. So uh, they meet twice a week. And if you go to our website, achcmi.org on the calendar, it uh, says when those meetings are. So feel free to uh, promote those within your own communities. They're not just for Oakland County when we're doing it virtually, anyone can join. And they're primarily for people who um, um, have loved ones who are actively in addiction and or family members who are, um, in recovery, um, family members who are trying to support their loved ones who are in recovery, 
there's a lot of um, educational um, opportunities and um, support through those meetings. This next, um, you, can, you can barely see it there. There's a little triangle. If you look closely, you can see right there. Um, that's where we typically, when we're not virtual, we have a grief support group, uh, which is dedicated to individuals who has lost, lost excuse me, who, is, who have lost a loved one to um, substance misuse. And then these little circles represent everywhere where we've done Narcan training. Um, so Tracy Sharikas is our lead for Narcan training. She does them throughout Oakland County. And again, since uh, COVID, we've been offering those virtually too. So two days a week is a dedicated time for uh, Narcan training. They're open to anyone who wants to join. In fact, we had a staff meeting earlier and Tracy reported that we've had individuals from as far away as California um, join in on these trainings. So we're really proud of that and really happy at how many people we're able to reach with these trainings. Um, again, you can go to our website, achcmi.org and learn more about when those are offered. So getting into the science of the positive. So we um, have a relationship, a contract with the Montana Institute um, where we have had a lot of training uh, to learn about the science of the positive. So what is the science of the positive? The Montana Institute indicates that the science of the positive is the study of how positive factors impact culture and experience. Uh, the focus is on how to measure and grow the positive and based upon the core assumption that the positive is real and is worth growing in ourselves, in our communities, our workplaces, um, in our communities. So the science of the positive really, really is based on the idea that the positive is all around us. We just have to look for it, see it, and grow it. And um, it's been proven through a lot of research through the Montana Institute that this is, that this is true. So when you're looking at the science of the positive, we base it on looking at what are the community norms and then what are the perceived norms. So we're always looking at our, our data, our local data, because we want to make sure that um, we know what is actually happening in our communities, what are the perceptions and attitudes of our community members, and specifically here we're talking about youth, um, and then what, are, what, what do people think is happening. So um, we're looking at the norm and the perceived norm, and then we want to address that gap, because typically there's a gap, especially when we're looking at young people and um, substance use. So as an example, this data uh, comes from the Montana Institute, um, but I, um, I want to indicate that these numbers are very similar to what we have found in Oakland County as well with our MIFI surveys. So, this, um, this slide here shows that when um, asked, uh, when 11th grade students were asked how, um, how many did not use alcohol in the last 30 days, 76% of students reported that they had not, and, and this is 11th grade males, reported that they had not used alcohol in the past 30 days. But when they were asked, how many do they, you know, how many of their friends or how many of their peers, how many 11th grade students do they think had used alcohol in the past 30 days? Um, the report was 64%, when in actuality it was only 24% of students that were using alcohol in the past 30 days. So when we want to address the positive, we want to address that gap. We want to address that gap between what is the actual norm where 76% of students are not using alcohol in the past 30 days, as opposed to the perceived norm where students believe that 64% are using alcohol in the past 30 days. So in order to do that, we wanna develop campaigns that are gonna stress that positive. We wanna stress the, the positive things that are happening in the community. And research has shown through the Montana Institute that when negative, um, prevention uh, strategies are implemented, they often are not as successful as when you are focusing on what the positive is. And we, and what a norm, what I want to, um, I forgot to share is that anything that's over 50% is what we're going to um, consider to be a norm. 
So any of your um, data, if it's showing that over 50% are doing or you know, engaging in the particular behavior, that would be considered your norm. So what we wanna do, what the science of the positive is going to do is, um, is to close that gap between what the actual behavior is and what the perceived behavior is. So we wanna close the gap between the number of people who believe that 64% of students are using um, so that they understand and realize that the norm, the higher number of students are not using. Because again, um, research has shown that oftentimes students are gonna make decisions based on what they think their peers are doing. So we wanna bridge that gap. We wanna create messages that are gonna promote the positive that's happening in the community. So here's a look at some data that we gathered in our partnership with Oakland University. And I wanna stress how important it is to develop those relationships with your community members. Um, today, I am uh, particularly focusing on our relationship with Oakland University, but this can be your schools, this can be your student, you know, your um, village, uh, um, your village uh, government, this can be your chamber of commerce, your business community. Um, anytime you wanna implement a campaign like this, you wanna have as many partners on board who can help promote uh, what your messaging is. So we have worked very closely with Oakland University in developing a team um, to be looking at the data. We survey students um, every year, um, and I'll get into that in a little bit about who our partners are, but we do work with the psychology department um, um, to survey students. We have a custom survey that we've created to gather the data that we need for our campaign. So this data here is based on information that we got from last year's survey. And what, this, what the graph shows is um, when asking students the number of drinks when they binged, um, students reported that they believe students will drink over seven drinks on any occasion when they're binge drinking. But when they self-report how many drinks that they have that they would consider binge drinking, it's two and a half, okay? So again, that's showing the difference between the actual and the per perception. Um, again, asking the question, the typical number of drinks that they believe Oakland, Uni Oakland University students have when they go out to drink, the perception was that it was four, when in actuality, it was one and a half when they self-report. And then here, um, when at students asked how many days you think fellow students drink out of the month, it was over 11 days. When in actuality, self-report students said that they typically drink three days out of the month. So again, that indicated that, you know, there's a big gap between what students believe other students are doing and what is actually happening. And so um, the researchers, our, our uh, research partners, uh, in the psychology uh, department reported the result, these results, that injunct in, injunctive norms predicted alcohol involvement. That is, the more that college students reported perceived alcohol approval for drinking behavior from friends and partners, the more they reported involvement in alcohol. And also, college students' perceptions of other OU students' drinking behavior further accounted for students' alcohol involvement. That is, the more that students perceived their peers engaging in frequent alcohol use, the more they reported higher involvement in alcohol themselves. So the takeaway message that, um, that we can take from this is that um, social norms campaigns assume that misperceptions of social norms are linked to actual behavior. The data from OU is consistent with that idea. When students believe that their immediate social circle approves of drinking, and that the OU community at large drinks more often, more, more drinks more often, students report drinking more themselves. So this, this data uh, proved out uh, what, the hypothesis, what the hypotheses are um, with the social norms and the science of the positive. And then this, this further um, demonstrated, demonstrates this. So students were asked, um, OU students were asked how many, what percentage do they believe uh, 
um, or how many students do they believe uh, have ever used drunk on, used drugs? Um, OU students have used drugs. They reported that they believe 80.3% of OU students have used drugs. When in reality, students reported that only 32.4% had ever used drugs. The next one, again, um, asking the question of um, how many students, OU students, did they believe had ever vaped? 89, they, students believed that other students, 89.3% had vaped, um, but self-report, it was only 40% had ever vaped. Um, the third one here is about cigarettes. Again, students reported that they believe 69% of students had smoked cigarettes when in actuality only 31% do. And um, students reported that they believed 97% of students had, had uh, been drinking in the past 30 days when in actuality the self-reporting was 58%. So again, we're showing the big gap between what the perception is and what the reality is. Um, findings uh, from our researchers is that if students indicate that they have vaped, their perception was that 90% of other student OU students have also vaped. But if they had not vaped, their perception was that 84 had vaped. So this, this demonstrates that if, um, if they're engaging in the behavior, then they believe that more people are engaging in the behavior as well. Um, and this goes for this next one too. If, if students report that they have used drugs recreationally, their perception was that 94.4% of OU students also have used drugs recreationally. But if students reported not using drugs recreationally, their perception was that 73.6% of their students, um, of other students, have used drugs recreationally. So the takeaway message again is whether or not college students use substances of different kinds is linked to whether they think others have done so as well. Again, these findings lend themselves in support of social norming campaigns. If the percentage of perceived others is reduced, it is likely that the number of OU students using substances might decline as well. So that's our goal. Our goal is to promote uh, what the actual norm is so that more students are aware that, hey, maybe not everybody is drinking as much as, as I think they are, or maybe not everyone is smoking pot as much as I think they are, or vaping as much as I think they are. And um, that will hopefully uh, influence others' choices whether or not to use. Okay, and, so, and I just wanna say, if anybody has any questions as we're going through this, if you want to just put them in the chat or in the question um, area, uh, we can address those as we're going along. Corey will be monitoring that and we can take a minute and answer any questions you may have as we're going through. So- okay. Marianne, there was one question about how long is the online Narcan training? It's one hour. Yep, she keeps it to one hour. Okay, so getting into the um, action steps for the science of the positive. The Montana Institute um, has developed these uh, seven core principles um, in, in working with the science of the positive. And um, they've been able to mirror them along with the strategic prevention, prevention framework, which is very helpful to all of us who either are, you know, have gone through CADCA training and or working with the DFC grant, doing strategic planning, how we, um, a, lot of, a, a lot of coalitions use the strategic prevention framework for their strategic planning and their planning. So the, um, the Montana has made it very easy to mirror all those steps with the steps for implementing a positive norming campaign. So basically um, the first core principle for the science of the positive is to be positive. Um, and the action step is to connect and they, and they mirror this with cultural competency. So that means being aware of your community, being aware of its cultural makeup and what the needs are. To be present is to assess. Um, that goes along with the assessment piece, being aware of what, what is happening in your community, what the needs are. Um, being perceptive um, is to build capacity. So knowing what those needs are, who you need to be contacting, who you want to engage in your, in your campaign, um, what capacity, what funding, what materials, what resources are needed. To be purposeful is to plan. Um, the whole planning piece 
um, planning your campaign. Um, a lot of planning went into our um, campaign implementation. We have, and we continue to, we're continuously doing focus groups. We're continually getting feedback. We're continually working with our partners um, to plan uh, strategies that are going to be meaningful. Be perfective, be perfected uh, um, is related to sustainability. Um, also being able to look at your, look at what you're doing and make changes as you need to. Um, be proactive is to implement, um, implementing all of your strategies that you worked so hard to plan. And then being passionate is about evaluation, wanting to make sure that what you're doing is effective and being able to tweak and pivot and, um, and do what you need to continue to do to try to have the greatest impact in the community that you're serving. So we started working with Oakland University in 2017, um, the summer of 2017, to start planning um, um, our Positive Norms campaign. We had a contact um, in the department, in the University Recreation and Wellness Department, who was really interested in the science of the positive and implementing a positive social norms campaign. So when you can find someone um, that's going to get you a foot in the door, it's gold, it's golden. So um, we were very fortunate to be able to um, have this particular contact that we were able to make. And then she was able to engage the psychology department, um, university housing, um, um, student services and engagement, and the marketing department, and all working together as a team to develop this campaign. Um, they provided us with data from their 2017 NCHA survey for our baseline data. So we were able to look at that um, and determine what, what we wanted to focus on for year one. Corey, we have a question? Yes. Did the Alliance reach out to Oakland University or did Oakland University reach out to the Alliance? We reached out to Oakland University. And, and, and the nice thing was that um, one of our staff people um, knew someone in the recreation and wellness department. Um, so, so when you have those personal contacts, it's very, very helpful. Uh, we were very fortunate in that regard, but, but we, we approached them with the idea first. Um, okay, so, so we were able to look at the 2017 data. They shared that data with us. Uh, we worked with their team. And um, we determined that the first year we wanted to focus on um, mental health, underage drinking, and marijuana use. Um, and, and right from the start, we knew that underage drinking wasn't a huge issue on campus um, for students at Oakland University, but we wanted to address it um, anyway, because we do know that you know underage drinking is, is typically sort of the drug of choice for a lot of, a lot of young people. But what they were finding was increasing marijuana use. So we wanted to address that as well. Um, at the same time we were working on um, looking at the data that they provided us, um, our evaluation team, um, uh, Dr. Darren Lubers and his team, um, and Dr. Lubers has a lot of experience working with the Montana Institute in positive norming campaigns. So they began working with the psychology department to develop um, our own survey. Um, and that because the psychology department was very interested in doing a research study. And so, um, and uh, applying for an IRB so that uh, we, hopefully someday we can publish some of our findings um, from this long-term uh, uh, intervention. Um, and then we also were working at the same time with um, our consultants from Montana Institute to help us um, develop our messaging. So a lot of pieces that were all kind of moving together at the same time. So what we came up with um, after, I mean, and this took probably close to a year. Um, to work through all of these um, different ideas and strategies. So originally we would hope to use the um, branding phrase, the bare truth, because Oakland University, you may or may not know, they're the Golden Grizzlies. Um, the Grizzly Bear is their mascot. So we thought it'd be really cool to play off of um, the bear and call our, 
our campaign, The Bare Truth. Um, we did some focus groups um, and we worked with the marketing department at Oakland University and they came up with, they had a, um, a marketing uh, strategy that they were implementing where they were using a lot of photographs from campus, um, photographs of students looking thoughtful. They were, they were really wanting to promote their, their um, campuses as uh, mindful, thoughtful, intellectual um, environments. And so they were, they were, their suggestion was to play off of that, um, their campaign with some of our messaging. So we focus grouped these two different posters um, with students. This first one, um, the students didn't like. They basically said that um, it looked like all the other posters that they see on campus. They didn't think the message really matched the, the picture. Um, and they, they um, thought, they, they used the term that they go poster blind, that they see so many posters around campus that it wouldn't stand out. Um, they, just, they just didn't think it worked. But they did like the cartoony ones. They liked the ones that were sort of playful, um, cartoony looking. And so um, we brought that information back to our team at Oakland University and decided to go with a more cartoony look for our campaign. And that was what was really, has been really nice about our partnership is that we really listen to them and they listen to us. Um, they're the experts on campus. Um, we might think something is gonna be great and it doesn't, you know, we, we, we approach them with our idea, the, the, um, our team, they bring it to students, we get their feedback. Because we really want to make this um, something that works for everyone and we and more importantly we want to make sure that it's relevant for students and that students are going to pay attention so um along with this feedback we got from our our um staff uh, and faculty team at oakland university that they were concerned that we were going to run into trouble using the bear um that uh we could use it but there were gonna be a lot more hoops that we would have to jump through um, because of the fact of their mascot being the Golden Grizzly. And there's a lot of trademark issues and, and issues that we would have trouble with. So we decided to change our mascot, went back to students, talked to faculty and staff at, at Oakland University and determined that geese were an issue on campus. Um, we were told that they hang out around the lake on campus and sometimes they can be a little aggressive so um, uh, we decided to change the mascot and we came up with our goose and focus grouped this with students. They liked it, liked the look, liked the goose. And um, so this, this became our branding. This became our look for our campaign. Um, we worked with uh, Montana Institute to come up with four messages that we wanted to implement for that academic year. So the first message that we implemented was um, everyone loves a party pooper um, with the message of 79% of OU students um, have only zero to four drinks when they party or socialize. So again, we wanted to promote that binge drinking, you know, drinking five, six, seven, eight drinks is not the norm on campus. Um, students usually drink pretty moderately when they drink. Uh, this went over really well. Students liked it. We participated in um, Grizz Fest, Welcome Week. Um, we, um, we passed out, uh, these posters were put all over campus. We passed out, um, these were uh, uh, laptop stickers. And um, these were table tents that were all, all over um, their, the Oakland, Oakland Center in their eating areas and in their cafeterias. We also um, had a little candies that we termed as goose poop, which was um, chocolate covered raisins that we had labeled um, with the everyone loves a party pooper uh, branding. And um, they went over really well. Kids loved them. They tasted really good. They did. So, um, <laughs> so that was, um, so that was our, the, our kickoff for the campaign on campus. We next um, implemented a mental health message. Um, we got you fam. 76% of OU students would consider seeking out help from a mental health professional to assist them in resolving a personal uh, problem. And just so you know, um, with all of these posters, 
we focus group them before they were printed. So we had an idea, we had sketches, we would share them with our, with our team and then our team would share them with students and we would get feedback on whether or not they felt the messages were effective and back and forth tweaking until we got, got it just right. With this one, we implemented it um, with their stress less days, which uh, is leading up to their exams, just sort of encouraging people to take care of their mental health. Um, we gave away lip balm. We had a game, a wellness wheel game. We had activities at their stress less day. But we received some negative feedback for this poster from some students. And I want to pose the question, does anybody in looking at this poster have any idea of what might have been bothersome to students about this poster? And you can just put it in the chat if you have any ideas. Anybody? Corey, you getting anything? Not yet. Okay. Let's they're thinking. Think, they, okay. They're, they're a thinking, little bit more. Yeah, they're thinking really hard. But I know somebody's going to come through any minute. <laughs> I have something. Is it the wording? Not the wording. Nope. That was a great guess. It was a very good guess. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it away in the interest of time. Um, some students didn't like the way that this goose looked. Um, they thought he looked a little too disheveled. Um, we purposely wanted him to look a little disheveled because we wanted it to look like he needed some help, that he was struggling a little bit. But um, a couple students, you know, uh, brought it to the attention of... Um, the faculty and student housing that sometimes students don't look bad and they're struggling. And so it was sort of sending a message that, you know, depression or anxiety looks a certain way. So um, we took that in and, and realized that, you know, that was a very valid point that we had not considered. So um, um, it was important, you know, it was important for us to hear that and see that so that we don't make that um, mistake again. So Marianne, somebody said, I got a little stuck on the wording too, the would consider phrasing, would consider. Oh, okay, okay. I believe that wording was taken directly from how the question was worded in the survey. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why it was worded that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next camp, the next poster that we implemented, this was like um, in the winter of 2019, um, was uh, dealing with marijuana. So um, geese consume a lot of weeds, but not that kind of weed. Um, contrary to popular belief, most OU students don't eat or smoke that kind of weed either. In fact, 65% of students have never used marijuana. Um, again, we got good feedback on this one. Um, we kicked this off. We attended their casino night. Um, we had giveaways, uh, laptop stickers again, and we gave away these um, screen cleaner keychains. Students love these. We had them, we had a little, we were using a catchphrase at that time called what the flock. And so we had it, the, the little um, screen things say what the flock on them, kind of a play on words with the geese. Yeah, Corey's showing some sunglasses that we had. Um, students really like these. Um, and and um, during this time too, we were also um, table, do, having tabling events where we would um, do a little bit of like one-on-one -on -one focus grouping. Have you seen these, sir? have you seen this campaign? Do you like this campaign? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? And we got a lot of really good feedback as far as students liking the look um, the messaging, that sort of thing, except for that one poster. And then our final um, uh, um, poster for that uh, school year was um, fill the bill. So when hanging out with friends, be sure to fill the bill. Eight out of 10 students eat before or while drinking to help reduce the negative effects of alcohol. So with this one, we attended their Battle of the Bands. We had a photo booth. Um, we had spring giveaways, um, sunglasses and sunscreen. Um, you can see the sunglasses that Corey just held up. 
And what I want to point out about all of these is you'll notice that it's all a positive norm. All of these messages are a positive norm. They're all over 50%. Um, this is eight out of 10. The previous one is 65% of students don't use marijuana. 76% would use, um, would consider using, um, seeking out mental health help. And 79% of students only would have zero to four drinks. So we are playing on those positive messages, um, trying to reduce that gap between what the actual, what the actual behavior is and what the perception is. So at the end of, of um, that um, academic year, we regathered as a team with Oakland University team. Um, and through looking at our data and seeing you know, what we learned, we decided to shift to a mental health focus for the, for the 1920 uh, academic year. So I'm gonna let Corey take it over from here. Thank you, Mary So what we did was we went to Grizz Fest which is during their welcome week where they have all of the student organizations come together to promote their organizations to get students to join their organizations. So we were able to get a table set up and we actually took the sticky notes and we asked the students to write down what did Oakland University mean to them? How would they describe their experience with Oakland University? And so the poster represented, I believe we got over 200 sticky notes and we looked at the ones that were stated the most or most frequently and those were some of the ones we used for our poster so we then created our poster they said we're positive that oakland university is positive that is hopeful that oakland university they felt cared that they felt oakland university was diverse and embracing learning understanding and we created that poster and then we created a banner and we had the banner hung up in the Oakland Center so that the students could connect us being at the Grizz Fest to the posters that were that are all around campus in the academic halls, in the res residence halls, in the dining halls, and then the banner that they would see hanging up in the Oakland Center. Now I want to talk about positive norm. So I joined the Alliance a little over a year ago, and I like the, the I like this program. I liked it a lot. I really wanted to see how we could make the geese come alive. And so I might be dating myself, but the first thing I thought about was maybe we should call him Norm. And if you <laughs> know who Norm is, then you are dating yourself as well. So I couldn't where well, we couldn't call him Norm because every, somebody says, ha ha, because everybody <laughs> knew if I said Norm that I, I, I didn't want people to think we were talking about Cheers. Everybody knows your name, Norm, okay. I'm <laughs> sure some of you guys, we have 44 people on here. I'm sure more people know. Uh, Mike said that was his favorite sitcom. So then we came up with Positive Norm. And this is what happens when you're able to work with a group of people who are creative and allow you to think outside of the box. So Mary Ann then went online and actually found Positive Norm. We named him Positive Norm and he shows up to some of the events. I will say that if you're going to do that, make sure that you're, and he's called the, the ambassador. He's called a college, what is he called? The ambassador, the ambassador. We could not call him a mascot because the university has a mascot and we do not want to be competing with the, the grizzly. So one of the rules was we could not have positive norm and the grizz, I think is what he called, in the same place at the same time. So we have to coordinate when positive norm can be on campus. I also want to say be very careful because when positive norm shows up, he's very popular. Starting in the parking lot, people want to take pictures with him. They want to walk with him and talk to him. They want to feel on him, which he does not like, by the way. And when positive norm is actually in full effect, <laughs> someone said they want a picture with him. We can, we can, I can arrange that. Okay. All right. He's about eight feet tall when he's in full effect. And he's, he's popped around the university on several occasions. And what I was saying was make sure that you don't take 
your if you bring out an ambassador make sure you don't take him to the, the place especially if it's a college campus too often because you don't want him to be competing with the college mascot because then he may be uninvited so just a word to the wise is make sure so we try to be very strategic when we take positive norm to the campus but as Marianne was saying, we, we have several events and activities that are sponsored by the Student Affairs Office and the Student Engagement. And so we have gone and what we do is we're really trying to build up his social media audience. So we have given away the t-shirts. We have t-shirts with Positive Norm. And I might say that Positive Norm, he has his own shirt. I'm gonna see if I can show you. He's so big, but he has his own Look, he has his own name tag and he has his own shirt that says Positive Norm. So Positive Norm is a big deal around here. And let me fix my camera there. So we really tried to increase his social media. We want to ask all you guys too, if you really like what you're hearing and you want to know more about this Positive Norm, then you can follow him on Instagram. And I promise you, he follows everyone back unless it's some sketchy. But generally, he follows everyone back. So if you have an Instagram account, pull out your phones right now and go to at the positive norm for Instagram, as well as at positive norm on Twitter, 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 Twitter. <laughs> and he will follow you back. So some of the events that we went to during the 2019-2020 school year was, like we said, the Grizz Fest. And we went in the fall and we went in the spring. The, the, the mascot, the Grizz was there before Positive Norm showed up. So we made sure that he was going off the scene and then Positive Norm came in and stole the show. <laughs> not really, not really. He didn't steal the show. He just came in and everybody wanted to take pictures with him. Everyone liked Positive Norm. And we also participated in the Welcome Week Carnival and that is again where we collected more of the stickies asking people to describe what did OU mean to them. And then we went to the main stage. And again, we would ask people to take pictures with Positive Norm and then hashtag, use a hashtag on, the, on Instagram. And if they did that, they would get a t-shirt or any other promotional items that we had. We currently have a a water bottle and I was meaning to get one out to show you we have a water bottle with with positive norm on it we have t-shirts with positive norm and we use those when people when they sign up to follow him on Instagram or Twitter to give those out as prizes we showed up at the main stage and I positive norm really wanted to bum rush the stage and I had to hold him back because he thinks that he can sing and dance so I didn't want him to get thrown off of campus, so I held him back. We went to the casino night, and that was a big hit. Stress less day, we, we went there, and then they had a love fest for around Valentine's Day, and we had a photo booth there where people could take pictures with each other. And, and, and so it has been a very rewarding experience, and I would encourage all of you to consider doing this in some capacity in your particular areas. So we have laptop stickers. I think you, sh you saw one of them. We have the screen cleaners, which were a big hit. It, is, it doubles as a keychain, And also, if you turn it upside down and use the hair, it's a screen cleaner. We have USB drives, which were a big hit. And they were not USB drives. They had, I think, 64 gigabytes. It had a lot of memory. So they were not the little small memory USBs, the ones that had a lot of a space on it, a lot of memory. We gave out the goose poop. Now, look, I don't really like chocolate covered raisins, but I will tell you, those that goose poop was good. <laughs> I never would have thought I would have been eating poop, but that that was some good poop. And we think we should get some more, Marianne. Though that was some good poop. And then I showed you we had sunscreen, we had sunglasses, t-shirts. And if you have ever been to college or on a college campus, you know that students love giveaways. And what I'm so excited about now is that when they see Positive Norm or when they see the posters that he's really created his brand and people are starting con to connect Positive Norm with, with the posters, with the giveaways. 
Someone said that was some good poop, the line of the conference. I made the conference line. <laughs> that was, it really was some good poop. You, you, if you're into eating poop, that was some good poop, Mike. And then we had the social media campaign, have your picture taken with positive norm, post to social media, as I stated earlier, you receive a positive norm t-shirt. And then we have interactive activities like for stress last day, we went and we made the mala beads and we then put the aroma. What, is, what do you call it? Aromatherapy. Aromatherapy. And I'm telling you, I made several as gifts and they smelled really well to help with the stress. We had the Wheel of Fortune game with prizes. We did the, what do you call it when you stack the blocks and then you try to pull, you try Jenga. to pull. Jenga. 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 We did Jenga. Well, we have this big thing of Jenga and that was fun. And so just really getting involved. But I will say we really talk with our, our campus partners to make sure that we can attend these events. We don't just show up. We really go out of our way with meeting with our with our campus team to make sure that we can attend these activities. Okay, so we ended up, of course, COVID hit. And so we were not able to complete our campaign um, last year. We sort of, it came to a screeching halt in March when everything else came to a screeching halt. But we are, re, um, we are ramping up to implement again this year. Um, we have been, we have, uh, have revised our survey, kind of tweaked our survey again. We're going to be implementing that in September. And this message here, 87% um, of students support using student resources on campus for mental health. This poster was supposed to go out last spring, um, but since the campus closed down, we're going to be implementing that in October. Um, and then we're starting out as students arrive on campus, which move in day is today, um, we have this We Are All OU um, poster that is going to be throughout campus, again, with the geese with their masks and staying six feet apart. Um, and then we also have, um, they're distributing water bottles with our positive norm. Um, and then they also include a laptop sticker and just a positive message um, for, for the first 200 students uh, moving in on campus. So. Um, we're full steam ahead. Um, we're, we've tweaked and pivoted and we're going to do the best we can to continue our um, positive norming campaign with students. And finally, um, I just want to stress again how important, important it is to have um, dedicated partners that you're working with when you're implementing this kind of um, a campaign. The Montana Institute is, um, you know, they, they have uh, taught us, guided us, uh, been a, the really important part of being able to do this kind of campaign with fidelity to make sure that you know we're, we're doing something where we're going to get some good results and some good data. Um, Dr. Darren Lubers um, and his team are our evaluators, of course our Oakland University partners, and then Oakland Community Health Network who is our main funder who without the funds you know we wouldn't be able to do any of this. So I just want to give a shout out to all of our partners and with that um, I will open it up if anybody has any questions. So um, the question, Marianne, is how much funding for the campaign and is it funded by OU and uh, the Alliance and or other partners? So I think you briefly touched on the funding, but the question is how much funding for the campaign and- Well, and, and you know, that depends on how, I mean, I think it really depends on how, you know, how much money you have how um, how much you want to be able to put into it. We're fortunate to have the funding um, from OCHN that helps us to be able to purchase all of our giveaways, um, all of our posters. We, we do have, um, we have had in the past some support Oakland University. Um, the first year of the campaign uh, purchased all of the t-shirts and all of the posters. Um, so little, little pockets of money, they're sometimes able to help uh, purchase some of the supplies that we need. Um, our funding primarily goes to uh, purchasing, you know, uh, for paying for staff, of course, mm -hmm. purchasing a lot of our giveaways and incentives because we do offer incentives to um, uh, students who take the survey on campus. Mm -hmm. um, we, we also help to pay for the research assistant for the psychology department. Um, because they're dedicated to doing the research piece on this. 
So it can get a little expensive um, when you're doing it to the degree that we're implementing it. But you can also implement a, a, a campaign like this on a smaller scale as well. So I don't want money to be, um, I wouldn't want it to, to give you a high cost and, and have that make you shy away from trying to implement this kind of campaign. And Montana Institute, if you wanted to hire them as a consultant, they often will work with you on what you can afford. Mm -hmm. I think it's important also, Marion, to point out that we didn't just get here. We've, we've been building this over since 17, since 2017. So start where you are and then develop it as you get the funding or as you get the ideas like we did with Positive Norm. Right. Let's see. Being in prevention, we never let money get in the way, Mike says. Correct. Good, good advice. Any other questions? That just means you were so thorough in your presentation <laughs> that you covered everything from A to Z. Either that or I just went so fast and, <laughs> and nobody can think clearly. I wish we had some of that goose poop. It's made me hungry. <laughs> we have a lot of our coalitions because um, we have, you know, we have our 21 coalition network and, and several of our coalitions are implementing positive um, norming campaigns just on a smaller scale within their community. They're just looking at their local data based on their MiFi and picking out those positive norms and, you know, looking at what, what the um, perceptions are. Um, and picking out those positive norms and then just implementing poster campaigns, social media campaigns that are just stressing um, to the community and to the students, the positive, you know, the positive things that are happening in the community. So it can be done on a, a much smaller scale. So how many ambassadors are there? Well, to our knowledge, positive norm is the only ambassador that we are aware of. So the mascot is the degree is and then how many ambassadors are there who play the role of ambassador so the role who plays the role of the ambassador is a secret we cannot identify <laughs> that because that is top secret <laughs> but if you if you come to <laughs> Oak university when he's making an appearance then i don't know you might be able to figure it out you might be able to figure it out <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like uh, Batman, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know, but the way you spoke, it looks like you know the person pretty well. He said, you know, Norm doesn't like that when people like to touch him and, and mess with him. So just no, he doesn't. <laughs> but I tell you, positive <laughs> Norm, he has to have an escort because he's so tall. He has the duck to go into the doors or go in through doors. And so he has he has to have an escort. He He's pretty popular because when people see all these people helping him get around, they want to want to get to know him. Right. There's speculation on who that person is now in the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And just, and just um, to add to that, we are, um, I mean, we had planned this summer to work on a uh, positive norm um, program to bring into like elementary schools, you know, yes. like have norm come into schools and, and work with younger people to, you know, to encourage them to focus on the positive. Um, but we've sort of put a hold on that with um, COVID and everything. Um, access to schools is pretty limited, but that, that's coming in Norm's future. So. Anybody with any uh, last minute questions, comments? We do have a few minutes. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was very good. Uh, if I ever get down to Oakland University, I'll try to keep in my eyes and ears open for, for positive Norm. <laughs> <laughs> And Hannah says she would like a picture. So I'm sure I could arrange that. I have a little, little pool, a little influence with, with positive norms. So Hannah, if you're ever in the area, let me know. I think we can arrange that. Barb says, great presentation. Anybody have any last minute questions? Susan says, nice to end on such a positive note. I <laughs> like it. Unintended. 
Well, again, thank you very much. You guys have helped us out in the past, uh, actually in the last year or two with presentations too. So we appreciate uh, the work that you guys are doing in Oakland County. Um, we have one question, I guess. Um, you guys have a lot of coalitions uh, about, I don't know, I'm sure you said it in the beginning, but what, 18, 20, somewhere in that range? 21, 21. What's the, uh, is the range quite vary for the 21 coalitions as far as their funding? They're not all DFCs, but you probably have some DFCs down there, but it's, what's the range in funding, do you know? I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. The screen locked up. The, uh, what's the range in funding across the 21 coalitions? My guess is it might vary uh, quite a bit because I'm sure not all of them are DFCs, but, but what's the funding range? Well, we, we provide funding um, through our funder, Oakland Community Health Network. We're able to provide, um, you know, seed funding for the coalitions. Um, we provide $35,000 per coalition um, just for seed funding. Um, it helps to pay for a director. We try to provide as many resources as possible so that we don't, so they don't have to spend their money on that. Um, we also receive a little bit of funding with our PFS grant that we provide to coalitions. I got frozen, maybe? Yeah, I think she got well, frozen. Say, there she go. Oh, OK. Um, and then I believe there's five coalitions that are DFC funded. I think four or five that, um, and then there's several coalitions that have already aged out of their 10 years of DFC. Um, and then we do have one coalition who did receive the PFS grant this year. So that was really exciting as well. So yeah, so the funding levels, I mean, we have a certain level that we're able to fund coalitions and then each individual coalition is able to seek um, additional grant funding um, as they you know, feel like they're ready to do that. Right. Well, again, very nice job. Um, let me go ahead and hit stop the recording, but then we have just a few minutes of wrap up. So thank you again. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. This was fun.